Growing up, one of the Sunday school lessons that stayed with me is in the form of this beautifully illustrated book. And the book goes through every word, every verse of the great hymn, I Sing a Song of the Saints of God. The book goes through all the different saints who are mentioned in that song, not necessarily by name, but by deed. Saints all the way from St. Luke to Joan of Arc, even. Now, for the last verse, the illustrations change a little bit. The pictures are no longer of people in the ancient past. There are people that are much closer to us in time. And outfits that, yes, are at this point now a little dated, something that we could all recognize. And as it goes through this final verse with these illustrations that look more and more familiar, it ends with the final section of that hymn, with the words, for the saints of God are just folk like me, and I need to be one too. It's a very powerful statement to make. It's a very powerful statement for us to hear. We're used to thinking of the saints as people who lived long ago, who did great things. We hold up as examples, examples for us to strive to be like, to strive to live up to, to strive to do great deeds as those people did great deeds long, long ago. These are the people that we have remembered throughout time, the ones that we believe we will continue to remember for many years more. Now, at the very least, we might think of the saints as those whose names are etched upon our walls, our altars, even. We think of those as the people who help build up our church. That's another way we think of who the saints might be. They're the names that we have literally etched on the walls they help build. Now, if you think that these are the saints of God, then you've only covered a fraction of who those saints actually are. That's the point of that hymn. I sing a song of the saints of God. It's why we're celebrating this day today. It's the reason we celebrate each and every Sunday. To remind us that we are part of that body of saints, too. This is the lesson that the epistle to the Ephesians is trying to teach us this morning. And it's there that the author of Ephesians praises the church for their love toward all the saints. And that title of saints is meant to include the Ephesians as well. As we hear in the letter, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints? And right after those words, we hear, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe according to the working of his great power? The great power, the great inheritance received by the saints is what we receive as believers. We are the saints too. And if that weren't enough proof, the letter of Ephesians begins just shortly before the passage that we've read today.
today with the greeting to the saints who are in Ephesus and are faithful in Christ Jesus. These are the ones to whom this letter is addressed, the saints. And these aren't the people who have gone on to do great deeds that we all still remember. These are normal, everyday people, everyday Christians, just like you and me. And yet these are the ones that are declared to be saints at the beginning of this letter. This is how they are forever remembered in our scripture, the saints. The saints aren't just those who did great deeds and are remembered for them. As Jesus reminds us in our reading, and as we've seen in, throughout all the prophets in this season after Pentecost, those we declare as saints aren't always those who were remembered for their deeds. They weren't certainly remembered well for their deeds in their own day and age. That's what we see with the prophets. That's what Jesus tells us. The prophets weren't well remembered for their deeds in their days. People reviled them for sticking up, for standing up for the word of God. And again, that's what we have seen throughout this season. Those who followed Christ weren't always those who had good deeds to their names anyways. We see that through, through those like Paul. Paul who did terrible things to the early church before he came to accept our Lord Jesus Christ. The saints aren't those whose names are just etched on our walls, either. At this point, most of them did deeds that we may not even remember. We may not have even been born for when they did those things. The saints of God the body of Christ. And as Ephesians reminds us, those are all of us in the church. For that name, the body of Christ, is another name for the communion of saints, as we see in the baptism service. And it's in baptism that we know those names are meant for all of us. We are the body of Christ. And we are part of the great communion of saints, too. Now, very shortly, we will say together the renewal of baptismal vows. And we do so as a reminder. That this is one of the five most appropriate occasions for baptism to occur. And this day is particularly appropriate because it's the day we celebrate the body of Christ, the communion of saints that we are all baptized into. We say this renewal to remind ourselves as well of what it means to be a saint. Shortly after that, we will say the prayers for those who have died. And we do so to remember that they have a place in our hearts because we know that one day, once again, those people who we have loved that we cherish, that we adore, that we will meet them once again in God's heavenly kingdom. 
with all the saints of God. The saints are not exclusive, including some from our faith, but not others in our same faith. The saints of God include all who hold on to Christ Jesus and rest our faith in him. So if nothing else, remember this day these words, that the saints of God are just folk like you and me. And I, and hopefully you, mean to be one, too.